This video looks at the concept of synthetic lethality and how targeting cells that have a BRCA1 or 2 mutation by inhibiting polyADP ribose polymerases can lead to killing, selective killing in cells. DNA can be damaged in various ways. The phosphate groups or the ribose sugar or the nitrogenous base, so the adenines, cytosines, thymine, and guanine can encounter damage. The whole nucleotide can also encounter damage. The source of damage can be external. For example, ultraviolet light from the sun can affect nitrogenous bases in DNA by compressing adjacent cytosines and adjacent thymines to form what are known as cyclobutane dimers. This has consequences for transcription and replication when you have uh, adjacent bases that are compressed. The source of damage could also be internal. For example, did you know that hydrolytic reactions in the cell can result in cytosines being converted to uracil over time? Uracil pairs with adenine, while cytosine would have been paired with guanine. So the cell has a mechanism for removing conversions of cytosines to uracil. DNA damage is initially sensed by proteins that phosphorylate other proteins to modify them for a particular activity. So they're called kinases. These initial DNA damage sensing proteins are ataxia to longexia mutated, or ATM for short, and ATM and RAD3 related protein, or ATR. Ataxia to longexia mutated and ATM and RAD3 related kinases, in turn, phosphorylate hundreds of other proteins that are needed for appropriate DNA damage sensing and repair. So another enzyme that contributes to fixing damaged DNA is polyADP ribose polymerase. PolyADP ribose polymerase, or PARP for short, were the first enzymes that were found to be synthetically lethal in certain cancers. We will get to the concept of synthetic lethality in just a minute, but what are PARPs usually up to in a cell? PARPs are a family that contain around 17 members. PARP1 and PARP2 have functions in DNA damage response, as well as functions that are beyond DNA damage repair, such as apoptosis, immune function, and transcription. As part of the DNA damage response in a cell, PARP1 and 2 sense DNA damage and transfer or, uh, the signal to other proteins. They do this by making branched, poly ADP ribose chains on the protein target. So these branch chains that PARP1 and PARP2 synthesize are negatively charged and serve as post-translational modifiers. PARP1 binds single-stranded DNA breaks. When bound, its structure becomes changed with the effect that its catalytic site becomes activated. This activation is what causes the negatively charged poly-ADP ribose chain synthesis. This synthesis of these chains of ADP ribose uh, allows the recruitment of other proteins such as XRCC1 and remodeling of the chromatin structure around the damaged DNA. And in this way, it contributes to the repair of the DNA. So molecules that inhibit PARP were the first clinically approved drugs to take advantage of a concept known as synthetic lethality. Synthetic lethality is an idea that was brought forth almost 100 years ago. It explains the scenario where the absence of one protein in a pathway or the absence of its function in a pathway is tolerated. But when that protein is lost in combination with another key protein, so their functions are lost, both of their functions are lost, then the cell is no longer viable. It's lethal, synthetically lethal. This idea is used when treating certain cancers. So you all may know that chemotherapy and radiotherapy uses DNA damaging agents. When cells sustain DNA damage, they mount a DNA damage response or a DNA repair response. So let's take a scenario where one DNA damage response and repair protein such as BRCA1 or BRCA2 is no longer functional in a cancerous cell. In such a set setting, inhibiting PARP1 or 2 by preventing PARP1 from PARP one or 2 from repairing DNA damage caused by chemo or radiotherapy was suggested to lead to greater killing of cancerous cells. 
what is the evidence that led to inhibitors of PARP1 and 2 being engineered? Well, two groups in 2005 reported in the journal Nature that when BRCA1 or BRCA2 is mutated, then blocking PARP causes synthetic lethality. So Pharma H. et al. in their Nature paper, Brian H. E. et al. in their Nature paper, showed that with increasing concentrations of PARP inhibition, cells with BRCA1 and 2 functionality were able to tolerate PARP inhibition. But when they had cells without BRCA1 or 2 functionality, then at very low doses of PARP inhibition, those cells died. Molecules that inhibit PARP pyrrolation, which is the synthesis of the poly ADP synthesis, is called pyrrolation. Molecules that inhibit that at sites of DNA damage uh, include, and I'm going to mention them in the order of potency, include telozopyrib, neroparib, olaparib, recuparib, and veliparib. And veliparib is also known as ABT888. So these molecules work by blocking the catalytic site where NAD, adenine, adenine, dinucleotide would normally bind. And so it's a competitive inhibitor of NAD+. In addition, PARP inhibitors trap PARP at the site of the damage. So the, the potency of PARP, the potency of PARP inhibitors are dictated not just by the ability to compete for the NAD plus site of the catalytic site, but how well it traps PARP. So telosopara being the more potent of them traps PARP very efficiently. BRCA1 or 2 or BRCA proteins, as they're called, it's considered a tumor suppressor because the original allele is always mutated in tumors. BRCA proteins function in repairing DNA double strand break using a mechanism known as homologous repair. This is where homologous, so similar but not identical DNA template, is used to repair a damaged DNA segment. People may inherit mutations in these proteins from birth, that is, a germline BRCA mutation, or the mutations may arise over their lifetime, that is, it's, it's, it would be, it's a somatically acquired mutation. So based on the preclinical data from Pharma et al. and Bryant et al., phase 1 clinical trials were initiated with Olaparib, the PARP1 inhibitor, and it included patients with germline BRCA mutations. Lo and behold, 63% of those with BRCA mutations showed improvement in their tumors, confirming that there was indeed synthetic lethality between BRCA1 and 2 mutations and PARP inhibition. Finally, it is worth noting that resistance can occur to PARP inhibition and there are some mechanisms that are suggested for uh, being responsible for this inhibition. The first one is in inactivation of another DNA repair protein known as 53BP1 or inactivation of another protein called REV7. Or if you have loss of PARP1 functionality, then your PARP inhibitors wouldn't work. One validated pathway via which resistance can occur is restoration of open reading frame in BRCA1 and 2 mutants so that they revert to having homologous recombination functionality. And this mode of resistance, so when they have the reversion to an open reading frame, also causes resistance to other drugs known as platinum drugs such as cisplatin. All the best with your experiments.